The debate is heating up as the budget nears. The question posed is, will Mr. Abbott keep his election promise? ABC are adding piquancy to the discussion by claiming that if Abbott fails, it will be just like Gillard's failed promise. It is worth noting a few things as the left try to inflate the situation to resemble something other than what it is. Prior to the 2010 election, Abbott and Hockey claimed Gillard would initiate a carbon tax. Gillard said she wouldn't. Swan said that such claims were historical fear-mongering. Hysterical fear-mongering. Then came the election, and soon after, Gillard took steps to implement the tax. She did not have to. She would have had ample parliamentary support to not implement the tax, but she chose to. When Gillard was finally deposed, Rudd claimed he had finished the tax. When Shorten became leader, he said he would protect the tax. And so the Australian Labour Party have lied to the Australian electorate on several occasions and continue to do so to preserve a useless tax that obstructs business. Compare that with Abbott's promise to fix the budget. The short-term levy will not impede business long-term because it won't exist long-term. But if nothing is done to begin repaying Australian Labour Party debt, it will be very bad for all of Australia moving forward. In such stark terms, there's no equality in election betrayal claims. Fact check. Herod the Great is tied to this day from a modern discovery of his tomb in 2007. Only, as was a frequent problem in antiquity, he is not buried in his tomb. Herod was a great builder, as exemplified by the remaining wall of the Second Temple. Herod was also a high-ordered bastard who added a twist to the modern practice of a man calling their loved one honey. Also, on this day in 351, there was a Jewish uprising against their persecutors. Only the persecution was not imaginary, and the advantages resulted in slaughter. In 1429, Joan of Arc plucked an arrow out of her shoulder and led a charge at the Siege of Orleans, winning and turning the tide in the Hundred Year War. On this day, prototypical leftist Robespierre in 1794 tabled to the National Convention in France the plans for a cult of a supreme being. He had wanted to reject Catholicism and institute a worship of reason that was different to atheism he witnessed and did not like. Thirty years later, Ludwig van Beethoven produced a supremely glorious Ninth Symphony. Today is Radio Day because in 1895 in Russia, A.S. Popov invented and demonstrated a radio receiver. On this day in 1940, a dying Neville Chamberlain was replaced with Winston Churchill as PM. In 1952, plans for the integrated chip were first tabled. In 2000, Putin was inaugurated President of Russia.